Welcome back to our channel. Electric motors used in electric vehicles need a control mechanism that ensures enhanced smoothness, reliability, and efficiency. Before moving on to the video, please subscribe if you have not subscribed. The basic principle of rotating a motor's rotor is to produce magnetic field in a stator. This is done by energizing the stator coils with alternating current. The secret to the smooth operation of a motor lies in knowing the position of the rotor, which is the angle between the flux axis of the rotor and the magnetic axis of the stator. Once this value is known, the stator current is aligned with the torque axis of the rotor. Graphics depicts the torque produced by a permanent magnet three-phase motor as a function of the angle between the rotor flux and that current MMF from the stator. At zero degrees, that is when the current MMF vector is right on top of the rotor flux vector, there's essentially zero torque. When it is either plus 90 or minus 90 degrees, the maximum amount of torque is achieved. So in order to achieve peak efficiency, the stator magnetic flux must be perpendicular to the rotor magnetic flux. To control the torque on the motor, regulate the amplitude of the stator current vector. Field-oriented control is a motor control strategy that decouples flux and torque by transforming the stationary phase currents to a rotating frame. Field-oriented control has three basic steps. First step is to measure the current that's flowing in the motor. So in this case, a shunt resistor, which is actually feeding an A to D converter and take a sample of the current reading. Second step, compare the measured current with the desired current and generate error signal. Now, once we have that error signal. And then finally, modulate the correction voltage onto the motor terminals. The Fock algorithm is able to simplify the control of three-phase sinusoidal currents reference frame by decomposing them to flux and torque DQ, reference frames. These two components can be controlled separately. Let us understand each of these steps subsequently. As the circuit is isolated, on knowing currents flowing in phase A and phase B, current flowing into phase C is calculated as sum of phase A and B. So take the scalar reading for phase A that goes along the A magnetic axis. And then the same thing for phase B since both A and B currents are positive, C current must be negative. That gives three current vectors. Add them together, to get net current vector to orient to be 90 degrees with respect to rotor flux. This is achieved by using Clark transform formula which converts the stator current to flux and torque coordinate system. The stationary reference frame of a three-phase system is transformed into a two-quadrant system in a stationary reference frame. In the block, the phase currents for phase A and phase B, IA, IB, from the motor are fed to the Clark transformation block. These phase currents from the motor are converted by Clark transformed to two orthogonal currents alpha and beta, I alpha, I beta. The newly converted phase currents now signify as torque producing and flux producing currents, respectively. The next task in measuring motor current is to do away with the sine waves, which requires one important input the rotor position. In the diagram the rotor position value is fed to the PAR transform block. In this block, the trick is to move from a stationary reference frame, from the stator's point of view, to a rotating reference frame from the rotor's point of view. Simply speaking, the PAR transformation block converts the two AC currents, I alpha, I beta, to DC currents, IQ and DID, torque and flex components. Step 2 in FOC is to compare and generate error signal. Here a proportional integral derivative, PID, is a control loop that relies on feedback from the motor in the form of torque. By calculating the difference between the desired torque and the torque received from the PARC transform block, it makes the correction. The input to the PID block from the FOC block is IQ and DID, the torque and flux component. In the context of an EV, the PID block will receive a speed reference when the driver operates the throttle. The PID block now compares the two values and calculates the error. This error is the value for which the PID block has to rotate the motor. The output that the PID block gives is VQ and VD, 
Step 3 or the final step of field-oriented control is to generate the modulated voltage correction signal to motor. PID output reaches the inverse Clark and Park transform where the exact opposite of Clark and Park transformation takes place. The inverse Park transformation block transforms the rotating reference frame to the stationary reference frame so that their phases of motors can be commutated. Space vector modulation here is to generate the PWM signals that are fed into the inverter which, in turn, generates the three-phase voltage that drives the motor. A three-phase inverter has six transistors that deliver the output voltage to the motor. There are essentially two states in which these outputs have to be with either top transistor closed and bottom one open or vice versa. With two states and three outputs, total eight states can be calculated. When you plot these eight states, also called base vectors, on a hexagonal star diagram, you will find that each adjacent vector is 680 degrees apart in terms of phase difference. The SVM finds the mean vector that gives the output voltage. Field-oriented control because of their noiseless and smooth motor operations is indispensable for electric vehicle design. Field of control stands out as a good fit. Please support by subscribing, giving like to the video and sharing with your friends.